but the Swagger Firo, that's something right there. That is absolutely something the opponent's bringing. Hey, is work. Oh my gosh, if I get shut down by this, that'd be unreal. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get shut down by this, and it's going to be unreal. Oh my. That just happened, guys. Welcome back, we'll pack Verlus here in the side to use Pidgeot and Firo. Now, I thought Firo would never, ever stand a chance to be used competitively and that it would be absolutely worthless in every scenario. And then that happened to me. So, any po person that has a Pokemon that they really enjoy, you now have hope for the rest of your life because that has taught me, like the whole idea of this channel is that no Pokemon is really bad and that there's some kind of strength to every Pokemon. And throughout the How to Use series, I've had my highs and lows of this. But if anything, that reinforces the ideology more than anything. So stay hopeful, guys. And at least gives me a way to justify updating the movesets. Because one, in my original How to Use, I didn't have Mega Pidgeot. And now Firo actually has viability. Pidgeot has weird stats, for sure. I mean, very average. 83, 80, 75, 70, 70, 101. Wait, what? So out of nowhere, we get a 101 base speed, which is actually really good on pretty much any other Pokemon because the 101 base speed means it outspeeds 100 base speed Pokemon and there's a ton of them so just edging out Pokemon could lead to some interesting scenarios but offensively our highest stat is 80 which isn't that fantastic now when I did do this and I had the bar graph set up I never made a mega Pidgeot so I'm lazy let's go over to Pokemon showdown really quick and just take a sneak peek at the stats so 80 attack 80 defense, 135 special attack, 80 defense, special defense, and 121 on that speed. Okay, what did I miss? What happened? Suddenly Pidgeot went from potentially promising atta physical attacker to, whoa, where's that 135 special attack coming from? That's okay. Now we'll talk about this in a bit, but first we're going to go and look at Fear Fear of stats. For some reason I want to say they're better and worse at the same time. My mind is conflicting, it's like both sides of my brain are having to worry each other on what to say right here because the 90 attack is objectively better and the 100 base speed, while not having that 101 little niche area, is still pretty nice. I mean, having 90 base speed is going to hit things, but we have less defenses, however 80s for hit points and defenses doesn't really give you too much else either. So there's that. Now looking at the typing of both of these guys, they're going to be flying normal typings, and flying normal typing means, well basic flying knowledge stuff that we're going to have ground immunity, ghost immunity, resistance to bug and grass, and then suddenly three weaknesses, ice, which is common, electric, which you see quite a bit, and rock, which is common. Also, stealth rocks is going to screw your day over pretty hard. So flying normal, you kind of see it everywhere on a lot of bird Pokemon, and that's kind of all there is to it. Hopping into Pokemon Showdown, let's hop out and go into what I had already prepared. Now, Pidgeot. What I have to say about Pidgeot is what I have to say about drugs. Say no, kids. Say no. Other than that, we have Mega Pidgeot. So Mega Pidgeot's going to be interesting, question mark? Because when you break down the special attack, and this was kind of what I was hitting at earlier, you have to run that Timid Nature. The 121 speed is another really weird speed. Okay, so you give it the outspeeds on 120 base speeds, but the problem is there's a Pokemon called Greninja that exists. So Greninja has a 122 base speed, which means Pidgeot is pretty much made obsolete just from Greninja existing with the 122 speed. You give Pidgeot a 123, maybe even a 124 to deal with Noiverns, and we're actually going to be in business. But no, because of this, it, it, Greninja just throws an Ice Beam your way and you fold like paper, so... It, it makes it very difficult when you're going up against a commonly used Pokemon such as Greninja. And also looking at Pidgeot, the 135 special attack isn't even a lot because there's no modest nature there's no life orb there's no boosting into it we're just running a pure 135 which okay yeah that's like a 100 base special attack pokemon using a life orb and some of those have pretty good speeds as well or at least something else to go in their favor so what that leaves us with is a no guard pokemon actually no guard you should see that ability more it's pretty cool and on pidgeot it means hurricane will never miss heat wave might not screw you over from missing hyper beam i've only seen it miss like twice ever and I've been playing Pokemon since it came out and I don't know fourth move I put feather dance here because I think it's going to accomplish the most that you can expect because feather dance is an absolutely OP move lowers the targets attack by two so what you can do is if you know your opponent is going to finish you off and you cannot get a KO on them hope for that outspeed get the feather dance down and then maybe get a revenge or force a switch out because against a physical attacker they just can't do damage to you anymore now, the interesting thing about Pidgeot is Hurricane does get stabbed, and the damage is alright. You're going to find 
two hit KOs in a lot of scenarios, and with that 30% chance to confuse the target into a 50% chance that they hit themselves in confusion, there are conversions to be made. Also in double battles, Hurricane works out pretty well. Also Heat Wave will hit both opponents, and you don't have to worry about it missing, so fire coverage on top of the flying, stacks with the grass, hits steel, it's kind of neutral. And then Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam is just the most damage you have, and on Pidgeot, it's worth it, I would say. That you don't have Hyper Voice, like I was typing in Hyper, it's like, yeah, what about Pidgeot not getting Hyper Voice? All right, Hyper Beam it is. So the idea is, you know, if you're, you're, you, I don't even know what to say. Like 80s on those bases means that sometimes you might survive like certain Life Orb or Scarf Pokemon or Pokemon that are trying to get an edge. You'll be able to be a two hit KO Pokemon while two hit KOing re in return and hoping off that hurricane. But in those weird scenarios where you knock out a Pokemon, you're very low on hit points and you still have the out speed, you might as well throw down the Hyper Beam anyways. I don't understand why people say Hyper Beam's a bad move. There are going to be very common scenarios where you don't get to do anything else, so you might as well lay down as much damage as possible and score that KO. Now, it does get bad because if you do score the KO, your opponent has a free turn to set up against you. Now, that's where they can bring in a Dragon Dance, Swords Dance, Calm Mind, Agility, Baton Passer, whatever they want to do. They can do it on that turn, but that leaves them open because if they don't use the speed boost, well then you outspeed them and you hit them with another Hyper Beam. So they are at least forced to react or do something. Therefore, it's not as bad as people say. Now we get on to Firo. Here's the initial Firo set. Drill Pack, Double Edge, Drill Run, and U-Turn. So a lot of drilling, but Firo doesn't pierce the heavens. It's not powerful enough at all. However, you still find not really that much else to do either. I was trying to like, I was about to say like something optimistic, like, by the way, Firo, never mind. Is, is pretty much where I was going with that mindset. 100 base speed, so if you win a speed tie against the common 100 base speed Pokemon, you only have a 90 attack. So you're forced to choice ban for any kinds of damage. Drill Peck. Game Freak, if you guys are watching this, that needs to happen. Just saying. And other than that, like, alright, Drill Peck. So we get a baby Brave Bird that doesn't really do that much damage. Double Edge, well. That's our Brave Bird, but it's just normal, so we don't get those super effective hits like we would with a flying. It's It does a thing, you know, double edge, you just go for that damage, hope for the best. There's a recoil involved. Drill Run does have a nice little niche to it because, hey, Rock is going to resist us. Steel is going to resist us. Now, also has a high critical hit ratio, which might mean something in a bit. Now, another weird thing is that we don't get Slash, which has a high critical hit ratio and gets Stab, and I'd imagine we'd be able to Slash with something on this Pokemon, but we don't, and U-Turn is an option as well. I'm not a big fan of, like, U-Turn, Volt Switch, but in this situation, a little bit of damage if you can't really hit anything. Like, on a choice item, having U-Turn is pretty nice, so come in, outspeed, maybe get undersped, and that's why you U-Turn out, and try to look for a better scenario, get a little bit of damage, and try to regain some kind of advantage. Kenai is the only thing going for Firo. Pokemon's accuracy can't be lowered, and it ignores the opponent's evasion, so if they're spamming Minimize or something like that, Firo might be able to take them out, but it's not that damaging and they might be able to get stalled as well. Now there is the hidden ability Sniper, which is why we have Drifblim here. So Drifblim can actually do something like Baton Pass a Focus Energy, and it will Baton Pass the effect. So that means the critical ratio goes up by 2, and you can Baton Pass that as an effect, which means that you can put that into Firo. And then that gives us two options. One, we could just take that Focus Energy and turn it into a 50% chance to crit now that we have the new 6th generation mechanics. And then Sniper will activate on those times, giving us a 2.25 damage modifier, which is going to be much more than Choice Band, unless we're using Drill Run. With the Drill Run, we can just go into that. That's going to give us our extra critical hit ratio on top of our Focus Energy. And then we're always going to be doing mad damage with that, which works out. Or we could equip a Razor Claw, and that's going to give us that last little bit of critical hit ratio, which means everything is going to dunk and do damage. We saw... Uh, it's like this. here's where I'm conflicted because I guess the drill pack works better than Brave Bird because we don't have to worry about the recoil. We have that minimize going for us as well, so that's where we just take out the U-turn. We're not going to switch out and give up all these stats, so that's where we have the roost. We have the roost, so we take damage, we heal it off. They miss their hits. Drill pack comes in, works out really well. So I guess you can baton pass shenanigans in the Firo. 
and that's kind of it just to get the most out of the sniper and I don't really see anything else other than that also ignores defense gain so if they're using iron defense or spamming something like that you can maybe beat them up surprisingly but I see the biggest thing with this drift limb being the minimize that you minimize focus energy but Tom pass now Furo is at least a little annoying um we don't get home claws we don't get swords dance Firo has nothing. It has to be absolutely useless, right? Well, that's what I thought naively when I first did the guide. Two years later, we are doing Firo justice. So this is roughly the set that beat me up. I would imagine I had a hit point investment. Pretty much you max out the speed, you land a swagger, and you take them down. So again, we're keeping on that keen eye because we're doing some kind of stally, filthy hack stuff. So we might as well not lose out to other stally, filthy hack stuff. And interestingly enough, Fly actually becomes very good in this situation. That by using Fly, we have invulnerability while doing damage, so Toxic will tick down, and unless they're hitting like Thunder or something that'll land on that semi invulnerable, we're in a good, pretty good position. That's the situation I was in. You swagger them, they hit themselves in confusion, you land Toxic, and then you fly, and then you land, and then they hit themselves in Toxic, and then they lose. Apparently, Pharaoh is capable of that, and I really like that set. I guess we could technically. Alright, alright guys, I'm gonna be fair to Pidgeot, because Pidgeot's a cool Pokemon. Ash rocked that bird back in the day, and it's just a really sick design back from the old days of Pokemon. I mean, it's a very nostalgic Pokemon, and I think every first generation fan of Pokemon wishes that Pidgeot was better. But it's not. So, I guess we could technically run the same set to better like success because we have more defenses so 7570 compared to 6561 more hit points 83 and more speed so we outspeed we get the edge against 100 base speed pokemon and then we can do the same thing all right i'll give it to him right there as for the item i feel that if you're going to be playing swagger and you're playing fly and you're trying to be annoying might as well run the bright powder make it to where the opponent just has that ever so slight chance to miss and I was also thinking about something, unfortunately, if you were thinking of it, no, Firo does not get Thunder Wave. But, you know, we can roost out of some scenarios. They you, they land a hit on you, you survive somehow, hopefully it's not a physical hit because that's Swagger, and then you just roost it back up, they hit themselves in confusion once again. Sure, why not? Because that's how Pokemon plays, with that Bright Powder chance to miss being annoying. I was also thinking about the Focus Ban, but in a really interesting way when you think about it, Bright Powder is better than Focus Ban. 10% chance to survive an attack, well, 10% chance to miss, and it doesn't have to be an attack that would KO you. Say it's a scenario where Pharaoh has a chance of getting to it KO'd. Well, then that first hit has a chance, and the second hit has a chance, or any subsequent KO hits could work out. So Bright Powder actually trumps Focus Band in, like, every scenario ever. Weird. Either way, that's what we're looking at. So Firo can actually be better than Mewtwo, and pretty much better than any Pokemon on the right day with this moveset. I guess another thing that you consider is like a Focus Sash. That way, if you want to guarantee from full health, that way if you do get outsped, you would have get gotten blown up. You can still try to play the shenanigan game. Either way, that's how it is. And then Pidgeot, same thing, faster, bit more reliable, bit more tanky. Still has keen eyes, so I guess we play that. And I guess that's all there is to it. So if you guys enjoy this video, hope you guys had a laugh, enjoyed everything. You know, we have a fun little video trying to bring these Pokemon up and surprisingly it works if anything it reinforces the do whatever you want with pokemon and you will eventually win kind of mentality that i love bringing to this channel so if you guys enjoyed the video hope you all have a nice day thank you very much for watching